Good afternoon. I'm Lucas Panzeca from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. The spring transfer portal opened today, and Tennessee linebacker Elijah Herring is the first Vol to enter his name. The Riverdale product heads into his junior season in 2024. Tennessee basketball acquired Hofstra transfer Darlingston Dubar, a 40% three-point shooter from the last two seasons. NBA play-in tournament begins tonight. Lakers and Pelicans tip off at 6.30. That is the 7-8 game in the West. And then at 9, it's Warriors versus Kings in Sacramento, the 9-10 game in the West. And the Nashville Predators finished their regular season with a loss in Pittsburgh yesterday. They are in the playoffs, locked into the first wild card spot in the West and awaiting their official first round opponent. NHL regular season ends on Thursday. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Man, last time I checked, it was Tuesday. It still is. Blaine and Mickey on Tuesday. Oh, I, I, I've not known what day it was all day. At one point, I looked at the calendar on my Tuesday. iPad. You just was, made me doubt myself. It's nine days until the draft. I know that. Oh. I didn't know what day it was, but I knew it was nine days well, until the draft. Well, that's what's wrong. We were going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs because uh, it's, it's nine days till the draft, and, and we're still talking about the, the same people. I'm tired of talking about the dang on freaking quarterbacks. Let's talk about the guys going in the fifth, sixth round, seventh round who are going to be great role players and potential stars. Nobody knows. Bananas is a star. <laughs> Thank you. See? Who would have thought? Made my Tuesday. See? You don't know. Isn't that crazy? You don't know. There, there's going to be dudes who went to big schools that were superstars in college, and they're not going to make And it. they're not going to make it. Yeah. And there's going to be dudes you never heard of. Mm-mm. That are some even undrafted yeah. that are going to make teams and be great players from no name school. Yep, never heard of. Who was that in last year's draft? Just top of your head, can you think of? Well, two years ago, the ultimate guy is Brock Purdy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he was he was the ultimate guy nobody was talking about. He went to a big school though. I mean, a big ish. I mean, he went to Iowa State, but with yeah, Puka Nakua, power five. Puka Nakua has last to be. Year? Oh my gosh. Oh, I looked him up. He still went fifth round. Yeah. He would have went higher. I think he got injured a lot in college mm. is what the the, the word out. And, and that might have affected how people perceive you, you know, coming into the NFL, which is a bigger, stronger, faster, more physical level. Uh, so and how could he last? But, I mean, he's a skilled guy. Uh, sometimes things uh, just happen away, and he's turned into a fascinating player, one of the – Shoot, man, last year, based off of stats, he was one of the top five receivers in the league, right? Yeah. yeah. It was, oh, uh, yeah. In contention for a rookie of the year. Hey, and I watched him live. I was like, hey, this guy's for real. I was like, whoa, whoa. somebody in trouble. So, yeah, you just never know, man, how it translates. And I and I said I, I, w- I wish I was a genius if I could figure out, like, why some guys, I- including myself, because I went through it mm-hmm. where – the game, and it took me probably three or four games as a starter to see the game slow down like it did in college and why I was able to adapt. But the guy, I'm going to just say, from Notre Dame or Tennessee or whoever, it didn't. Right. Like, why did that happen? Like, like the game, I mean, and it, I'm not, I couldn't even tell you the numbers of some of the receivers were running by me when I first got out there. I'm, I'm not, serious talk. I was like, man, he could have ear hole, man. I didn't even see him. And I'm just thinking now, I'm back deep. <laughs> I'm like, oh, where did he come from? I couldn't see the formation of, like, plays developing anything. None of it. It scared the living crap out of me. I said, oh, I don't know if I'm ever going to be. I got to go to work. Boy, I was up sunshine to nighttime. It, I was like, that. that is not a comforting feeling when you're out there and things are moving at a light of speed yeah. that you have never seen. And then each game, it started slowing down, slowing down, and then the next thing you know, I thought, "Uh uh-oh, this feels just like college. Mm. And then guess what happens to the athlete? You start saying, I'm about to dominate like I did in college. And then the confidence just skyrockets. And I'm telling you, and I can't even tell you why that happened. I can't even. It happened to me. I, I but don't in even, real time, you can see time, it. In real yeah, time, from real one game time, to the next I to the next. Uh oh, 
I saw this formation and we did a practice. And then now I saw, uh uh-oh, I saw the whole formation. I saw how it was developing exactly what. And then it just start, the game starts slower and slower and slower. And then next thing you know, I'm like, I'm about to take over. Uh, In my mind, that's exactly how I thought. Now I've conquered being a starter. Now I am about to destroy people. That's what I thought. But at first, I probably pooped in my pants. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I didn't pants, know good. What, what happened. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. this They are moving fast. I mean, even when it went from regular season to preseason. Now, this remember, I mean, to the playoffs. Remember, I was a rookie. So I'm, I got to start like week 10. Right. So then I'm starting in the playoffs. Like, whoa, we played this team before. I don't remember them running this fast. What the heck happened? They had rockets, so I, I I just wish I could figure out what is that mechanism, and you can determine if the game is faster than the ones who won't adapt to the speed and the ones that will. Right. And I can only say it was my eyes, but it has to be more to it than that because I didn't get any faster. I, I didn't. I, I, <laughs> did nothing change about me. You've told me, though, you have a really good memory, right? Like if you right. see something – that probably helped you a lot because you're like, wait a second, I saw this on film. Then you recognize it. No, it, but the same thing was happening in the game when I first started. I, the memory didn't change. Oh. They, they were right. I was like, oh, I did not see that. <laughs> so that's what I'm getting at now. Just, when I say I recognize formation, I'm not actually saying the formation. I'm saying the actual development of the play. Right. Like that's when you start seeing things slowly developing. And boom, you click and you go. I, I could not do that in the beginning. And that's where they're talking about, oh, the upside of players. And then as young players, mm-hmm. you get in the game and it, you start, you know, getting better and better and your confidence grows. And some just stay still. And I don't know why that happens. What was it like for you seeing guys get it? Like, oh, that guy's getting it. He's going to help us. Or seeing some superstar guy come in and thinking, uh-oh, this guy's never going to get it. Well, well, it, it was probably different reasons for different players. I would say some is their a mental aptitude as a player. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, some guys just didn't get it. And some guys are just super duper athletes and they've always relied on that. And when you get in the pros, you can't. Everybody is super duper and you better be a step ahead. If not, it's too late. It's too late to just stand there, let's say if you're a linebacker, and then react to what you eventually see when the play is going. Right. No, you need to be able to read players and, and and have your eyes in the right locations so you can be in the right spot for different plays. And some guys just never get it. I mean, they just never get it. And then eventually you get X'd out because your athleticism only can take you so far and you will make mistakes. Like, okay, good example of that. That's what everybody says at least outsiders, say about the signing of Murray. That's what they're talking about. Phenomenal athlete. You know, and, and basically you feel like they're saying, oh, man, he's just he's a little slow on, on reading reaction. Mm-hmm. Well, he is because he's relied on his ability. Well, guess what? You don't have to rely on your ability if you're attacking. You don't have to do that as much. There's still going to be times. Right. And it may take him a minute to get there, but he will get there. Mm-hmm. You got to believe it. One of the examples that always stands out to me was we were talking to Rashawn Evans, you and me. Yeah. And he said, yeah, man, I'm out there next to Woodyard who's been in the league eight years, and he gets to those plays faster than me. It's like he knows what's going to happen. And I, got, I just thought, oh, my God. Oh my. And this is what year for it was Sean Evans? This was his rookie year that he told us that. Right, right. He, and, his, and athletically, Woodyard couldn't touch him with the <laughs> 10-foot ten pole. pole. Yeah. Just athletically, if we're going to do a speed chart yep. about who's faster, who's more athletic, it wouldn't even be close. And not at that time. Mm-hmm. Year eight for Woodyard. Oh, but he when you got on that field, he was better. Yeah, He said, I was watching him run past me to make plays. I would go to make the play, and he would already be there making it. On the other side. Yes. just He was running past Rashawn Evans during the game to make tackles. The guy was bigger, yeah. faster, number one draft pick, all the attributes. Yeah. And Woodyard was probably a fifth rounder mm-hmm. from uh, Kentucky who was a good player, uh, but he was a smart player. So there's a mechanism where all those things have to come together once you get on the field. 
and then play. I always talk about the word freely, mm-hmm. and that, and some guys just never get it. And it, it's, man, I could make a whole bunch of moolah if I knew the answer to how that happens. Boy, if there was just some magic trait, you could isolate that trait. This guy makes it. This guy gets That's it. That's why I'm telling you. Uh, I, I want you to help me. Oh, uh, well, 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 since you're gonna, you know, you know, run all these leagues and everything. So well, I figured I mean, you, I'll you run should know UFL. since you, you got to know who's a good player. I have to select players. Help with that for the <laughs> UFL. That's for sure. Hey, I don't know if you remember this. We were at the practice at uh, Centennial one time. Uh-huh. We were all standing around. We'd done shows there, and I stood next to a Canadian league scout for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And I said, oh, you're talking about the Titans practice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Titans And I practice. said, let me tell you who you're looking at. The guy goes, okay. He said, have you seen I, my I list? To you. I said, nope. And I named seven people in a row. And he's like, yep, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. I said, I watch Canadian football. I know what works up there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I was sitting there like, oh, my God, I hadn't watched a dime. And none of these guys are going to make the team. Maybe one of them. Maybe one of them may have made the team. Yes. Or the practice squad or something. Yeah. That guy said. You were on it. Every one of those guys is on my list. Priority guys. I said, yeah, man. I went, that guy looked at me like, hey, man, how do you know any of this? <laughs> Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So I could be a Canadian League scout, Blaine. Yeah. Which, which qualifies you to be a UFL president and commissioner. 100%. If I got one season of scouting in Canada, with that on my resume, I think it's a done deal. Jay in Hendersonville wants to talk about Blaine being a done deal in the NFL. Let's talk about that. What's up, Jay? Where. Hey, Jay. Hey. Uh, two things. Yeah. Um, I think this is what makes the NFL. Like, there's a lot that goes into making a great player, but there's a lot that goes into making the NFL the best league going right now. And I think one of the things is you don't know who's going to make it. Like, oh. I mean, you think about, like, Jamarcus Russell and stuff, like all the right. hype, yeah. all the talent, and poof. You know, and then you look at, like, Brock Purdy, like, mm-hmm. who? You know, and now he's one of the top dogs. But anyway, the main reason I'm calling is Blaine had a leg up because you had all these guys going to these little schools in Alabama or Notre Dame or Ohio State, but that man went to Ball State. Mm-hmm. Chirp, chirp. That's why he <laughs> – that, that made it. That was it. If you can make it through Muncie, you can make it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Love the show. Chirp, chirp. Proud of you. Thank and you, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Really yeah, enjoy chirp, it. Chirp. Keep it up. Well, right, well, what I can not say about Mussy, though, hey, this is great. <laughs> there weren't a lot of distractions. Yeah, Besides school mm-hmm. and all the ladies in the school and the partying, there, there wasn't a lot of distractions in the city of Muncie. There, there, uh, matter of fact, I go back now and go, oh, man, the city has grown. Right. They have a little downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, all right, we can pick this up later, but let's do this when we come back. Kyle Tucker of The Athletic oh, is going man. to join us. He is the Kentucky basketball writer. Seems like there's some stuff going on with Kentucky basketball, so why don't we get to the bottom of all that next? It's Blade and Mickey. It is Tuesday. We checked. We're powered by all four seasons garage doors. Oh, man. Did you know Eurofix has a very different business philosophy? They staff all their locations with more staff than the average auto repair shop, just so they can be ready for your emergency when it pops up out of nowhere. So have you ever noticed how hard it is to get a right now appointment for a vehicle repair? Well, some dudes can be more than two weeks out just to get a freaking appointment, but not Eurofix. Eurofix has been offering quality repairs that beat the dealer without the dealer pricing since 1999. Plus a three-year nationwide warranty and the staff to fix your car right now. So if you are tired of waiting forever to get your car into the shop, then call Eurofix. Owner Aaron Stokes says, we are never too busy for our customers. We're here to take the pain away, and we mean right now. So Eurofix repairs all European cars, and Eurofix says yes to speedy repair when others can't or won't. Family owned for 24 years. And all you have to do is just give them a call at 844-EUROFIX. That's right, 844-EUROFIX, or you can visit them online at myeurofix.com. That's myeurofix.com. But always tell them Blaine, say,
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Transfer portal is open. Coaches doing coaching things. Kentucky doing Kentucky basketball things. And a guy who knows about all those things is Kyle Tucker from The Athletic, who joins us now. He is at Kyle Tucker underscore ATH. That probably also stands for athlete, I would imagine. (laughs) Yeah, oh yeah. Big time. I mean, is that where the ATH came Uh, from there, just to let people know from the jump what you were about? Yeah, well, you know, uh, video games are are a sport now, uh, Mm. so... I think, yes, in that case, yes. Well, I, that's one of the few sports my school is really good at, apparently. Uh, Arkansas State, be careful out there for bowling and video games. Uh, they'll give you everything they got. All right, let's ask you this again. Kyle Tucker, our guest. Is Mark Pope the right guy for right now at the University of Kentucky? It sure feels like it after after day one of the Mark Pope era. Um, it was a pretty... pretty it was a pretty... Pretty wild uh, scene at Rupp Arena, wow. and, and it's interesting because it flipped really fast. I think in, in the initial aftermath of the news that he was going to be the guy, uh, at least online, and we, have, we we do have to remember, and that Rupp Arena scene was probably a good reminder that you know Twitter's not real life. Right. But uh, you know, in the immediate aftermath online, people were, seemed pretty mad about the, the hire, um, and, and that's really b- about expectations, right? Because you're you're getting rid of a Hall of Fame coach, and you're thinking, well, we're Kentucky. We're going to just go steal Danny Hurley from UConn, which was an absurd thought in the first place. Um, I mean, the guy is it's making plenty of money. Sure, maybe you can pay him more, but he's making more than enough, and he's just won back-to-back titles at UConn at a place that regionally is perfect for him where his family is happy. Um, he's got it rolling. He's not leaving there to come be in the – in the fishbowl at Kentucky and scrutinized every move, um, you know, that people wanted maybe Nate Oates and Nate Oates has an $18 million buyout. And nobody's ever paid a buyout that big to get their next coach. Um, so that wasn't happening. And then, you know, Scott Drew was the AD's number one choice and he's won a national title. And, and, you know, that seemed like a shoe in because it's a guy that the AD's been targeting for a long time. If caliber left, and then he tells you no after after his family flies to Lexington and checks it out. And so I think the initial reaction to Pope was about that. Like Kentucky fans thought they were getting a guy who's already won a national title. Instead, they get a guy who's not won a single NCAA tournament game. All that said, you know, Utah Valley and, and BYU, where they have some pretty extreme um, limitations on recruiting and who you're able to bring in um, – and they just moved to the Big 12 and were very competitive, um, you know, that's not Kentucky. It's a totally different animal. And, and I think once people started to study Mark Pope and that he's got one of the best offenses in college basketball, and the fact, as big as anything, that he's kind of an anti-Cal, like he's he wants to build an actual program and a roster and not just, you know, have a, a an NBA draft pick factory, um, that he loves Kentucky because it's where he won a national title himself as a captain of the 96 team, one of the great teams of all time that people have a lot of great memories and feelings about. And then that he just tapped in to all that nostalgia at his inter- introductory press conference and talked about finding players who actually want to play in that jersey and, and that it's an honor to them as opposed to being a, you know, a pit stop on the way to the pros. Um I think all those things really connected with a fan base that had grown really weary of the way that Cal had done it over those, especially over the last four or five years. Hanging out with Kyle Tucker of the Athletic, covering Kentucky basketball. Well, I guess uh, for me, there's a theory here behind all of this. I, I want you to tell me if it was somewhere nearly even close to what happened here with Cal. Is that uh, you know he was going to stay, and then he kind of had a handshake agreement with the AD. Hey, I'm gonna look for another job that way. I kind of help you guys, and you guys help me behind the scenes, and then we'll see if I can get another job because it seems like the the road is coming to an end. And maybe he didn't want to you know change his philosophy on how he went about his recruiting, and then uh, then Cal got the Arkansas job, and naturally everything kind of float in its own natural course. Do you believe that theory or have any other theory that you think is what happened with Kyle and when it, why he left? Yeah, I don't know if it was as direct as that. Like, I don't uh-huh. know if he came out and said, right. I don't know if they came out and said those words to each other, but I, uh-huh. I do think the, the general idea of one, you know, he loses again in the first round to, to mm-hmm. Oakland. 
and everybody's ready for this to be over, but there's a $33 million buyout on Kentucky's end. They're not going to pay that. So they have this awkward announcement that he's coming back, and the AD and Cal sit for this interview together where they look like a hostage video. <laughs> yes, we're happy. You know, we're everything's great, and we are happy together. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was – it wasn't the spoken thing, but I, I I do think that Cal uh, behind the scenes was exploring every every exit ramp he could find. You know, I think he had some interest in Michigan. I think he had some interest in Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And when his best buddy for a long time, uh, the chicken man, Tyson Chicken Billionaire mm-hmm. Booster for Arkansas, reached out and said, hey, meet with our athletic director since you guys are both at the Final Four, Cal jumped at that opportunity because – I mean, he needed a fresh start, and they, Kentucky, needed a fresh start. Mm-hmm. And Arkansas needed to make a big splash, and they've got a lot of money to spend. I mean, the way Arkansas is set up, they've got all these billionaire donors and, and can get whatever level of talent you want to get there. Well, that's a perfect place for Cal because that's what he wants to do. He wants to assemble the most talented roster and say, I have better players than you. And he's going to be able to do that a lot of nights probably at Arkansas. I think what Kentucky fans got tired of is, you know, you had that here and it didn't get anywhere over the last several years. Um, and so I think people wanted just a an old school basketball coach in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. somebody who wants to build a build a team in, in an old school way. And I think they finally got that. Well, you talked about the presser, which I had never seen anything like that. That was a pretty impressive for first presser and how the fans were and kind of that roller coaster ride, as you mentioned of all the different coaches, then they got one of their own. Uh, did he ever talk about what his recruiting uh, style will be? Will he recruit one and dunners, or is he going to try to build a team? And and that means that you know he's going to you know have to take a little bit of time. But the the standard is always going to be the standard of UK, and that's the national championship. Yeah, I think he 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 mentioned basically a a, a total mix, which I think is mm-hmm. exactly how you have to do it now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know of a Kentucky coach that hasn't gotten McDonald, McDonald's All-American. Mm-hmm. Now, Cal was always going to get more than anybody else. That's, like, all he wanted to get. But every coach that's been in Kentucky, the brand elevates you as a coach and, and who you're able to go pursue. I mean, Mark Pope can, can get into a living room of, of a totally different caliber of player now than he could when he was at BYU. Mm-hmm. And so he'll – Oh, you're in a bad area. What's that? Oh, we lost you there for a second. We can't hear you. Oh, my bad. Welcome to the other side of your mansion. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. uh, In my cave here. Um, He talked openly about, you know, having a mix, and that's the right way to do it. You know, that you're going to get some – he's going to get some McDonald's All-Americans. You know, I think he'll sprinkle one or two of those in, and and you're able to get those at Kentucky no matter who you are. You should be able to get them if you're an aggressive recruiter because you're selling the Kentucky brand and everything that comes with it. Um, But he also wants some in-state players and wants some guys that are going to stay and develop and be four-year players, and he's going to obviously mine the transfer portal. He said he's, Mm -hmm. you know, they're in contact with basically everybody in the portal. But certainly that's going to be the case this year because they – now there's two, I think there are currently two – scholarship players from last year who have not either gone to the draft, exhausted their eligibility, or entered the portal. And there's only one of their six committed freshmen from the Calipari class, incoming class, who has not asked for a release, and that's an in-state player. They got their first new player today under Mark Pope, and he was a guy that was committed a top 40 recruit, a really, really good, really, really good player from the 2022 class who just got is just getting back from a, a two-year Mormon mission. So he's going to be a 21-year-old freshman. Oh. former top 40 player. So they're going to be older, even even with their freshmen uh, in this class. Um, but Pope's, you know, he's got a lot of work to do. He's said all the right things. I think he's stylistically as a coach, X and O-wise, mm-hmm. checks all the boxes. He's a good coach. He's a great public speaker, we know now. Mm-hmm. Um, and he cares about the program. All those things are great. But now, you know, got to get a whole bunch of players in a hurry. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, God, I guess one more for me is uh, – did Pope talk a little bit about his style of play? Because I saw a lot of analytic talk uh, there when he was <laughs> on the stage, uh, or I guess being questioned there. So I, I'm interested to see, uh, did he kind of go into what he wants the, the team to look like, uh, at least uh, stylistically on, on the court? Well, yeah, no, if you if you watch them play, it's a very modern. I mean, it's, if you watch the Golden State Warriors, I mean, it, it's a very modern style of 
of offense. They're, they're always a top five, top ten uh, offense. They spread it out. Everybody can shoot it. You know, they played through a, a, a playmaking big man last year, Khalifa. They, you know, you you got a, a center who can um, sort of see the floor and really pass it. I think they'll be looking for that in the big men that they recruit. Um, I would just say a very, very, very modern style of basketball. Very fun. Uh, there's there's a, a guy on, on YouTube who has a breakdown of um, – uh, does a lot of these cool breakdowns of different offenses. And, and I think he describes B, BYU as the college team that plays like a video game. Um, mm. So, it, you know, it's an entertaining style of basketball for sure. Oh, there you have it. Kyle Tucker from The Athletic. So Arkansas last won an NCAA basketball championship uh, actually 30 years ago uh, oh. this year, uh, 1994. You've got to set an over-under at point five championships that you think Kyle will win at Arkansas, do you take the over or the under? Under. Take the under. I mean, I mean, he's he's had I don't know twenty top two recruiting classes, and he's got one national title. Yeah. Um, you know, I, he needed a fresh start. I think he'll do well there. I think he'll win plenty of games, and they'll be fun. They'll have pros, but um. I mean, there's only, what, three guys, three active coaches that, that have multiple titles. Um, I just don't see it. I don't see, you know, 66-plus-year-old John Calipari, you know, who hasn't been to a Final Four in almost a decade, suddenly popping up and winning national titles again on the in the twilight of his career. What do you think will change the most program-wise with Pope in charge, just like on a day-to-day how things are run compared to how Cal ran them? Oh, well, uh, I would say more organized. <laughs> uh, I think mm-hmm. it'll be um, – I think there'll be a better plan. I, I mean, frankly, I thought staff was an issue for Cal at the end of his tenure, and I thought um, there were there were times where you look at them and say they don't look prepared. I mean, I – that's a little harsh, I guess, but it's true. Uh, you know, lots of other opposing coaches would talk, you know, they'd play Kentucky and go like, did they even watch us? You know, I can't believe that was the plan or what was the plan? Um, you know, and I think you're going to see a much more organized operation out of Kentucky moving forward. Man, uh, the Mark Pope era underway. And we're discussing it now with Kyle Tucker covering Kentucky basketball for the athletic. He is at Kyle Tucker underscore A T H. Yeah, Kai, I saw you You referenced, uh, I guess, the uh, the kid from uh, the five-star kid, uh, Chandler, right? Uh, man, they showed some highlights yeah. of him on, on your, your account there on, on X. Going against Shepard, man, that's going to be a heck of a combination. Shepard's staying there, by the way, right? I just want to make sure you hadn't put him <laughs> But uh, I would well, assume. I would, I, don't know. I, I would say that that's, uh, that is um, tenuous at best. He, I mean, right now he's projected as a top ten pick. Oh. And it, it's going to be tar- it's going to be hard for him to turn that down. That the the huge buzz in the state right now though is about Reed Shepard because uh, his dad is yeah. Mark Pope's college roommate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Um, yeah. So you know I, I think there's certainly a pull there. You know there was a big one more year chant going on at the introductory press conference for Pope about Reed Shepard, but uh, to me it seems like it's going to be mighty difficult to turn down the money and the opportunity to be a top 10, maybe top five pick, because I don't think anybody saw Reed Shepard coming, playing as well as he did last year. Mm-hmm. Um, not even him. And, you know, mm-hmm. you know, we talked to Rex Chapman, the former Kentucky great and NBA mm-hmm. player, um, at the event on Sunday. And he, he said, like, I know that it, it's, I'm all for wanting to be a kid as long as you can and how bad you want to stay here. This was your dream school, but – Every athlete's one false step away from never playing again, and you got to weigh that too. And this is an opportunity for Reed that it doesn't come along. So that that'll be a blow if he if he does go to the NBA. That'd be a blow. And if you want to talk about something that would set the whole place on fire with mm-hmm. excitement, would be if he does come back because I think that changes that changes the entire outlook for Mark Pope in year one if they can get get Reed Shepard back. You know, I, I love his personality, Coach uh, Pope. Uh, you know, he's done some quirky, funny things online. He's not, you know, afraid to go and do something outside the box. Uh, what's some of the, uh, I guess, or one funny thing you could say that you've seen on Twitter? Because I saw him pull off his jersey in front of BYU, you know, in their stadium and, and, and have on a UK jersey. And I don't know, he's yep. talking about he was a rapper and just, you know, just different <laughs> stuff, man. So what, what can you say you've come across? 
Well, uh, he's he's uh, apparently a big Hamilton fan and can rap the rap all the lyrics to the Hamilton yeah. uh, soundtrack. Um, he, uh, as you mentioned, he, there was a '96 championship team reunion that he couldn't get to because he was coaching BYU, and so he recorded a video with his. He rips his his dress suit off, and he's got his his whole game worn '96 yeah. jersey on, and did that leads the C A T S Cats 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 chant, which he did again at the press conference. Uh, Meanwhile, BYU he's, he's Bannister a, was right behind him, right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he's worn, and I think that's one thing that's really attached to this fan base quickly is like realizing how much he has always worn his love of his alma mater on his sleeve, even when he was coaching other places. Like I don't, I don't think anybody at BYU or anywhere else was surprised that when he got the opportunity, he was running to it because uh, it's this is kind of his lifelong dream. I think. Mm, there you have it, Kyle Tucker. Kyle, we appreciate the time today, man. Uh, we know it's been crazy times up there. I'll just ask you on the way out. You mentioned it just really briefly earlier. Do you ever remember a news conference before that turned into a pep rally like his no. news conference? That oh, turned? Good it was magic. insane. I think the word you tweeted was electric. Yeah. No, it was uh, – and because of that initial reaction to the hire, I don't think people expected it to be – crazy and it, like a lot of people were like are they sure they want to do this at Rupp Arena like what right. if nobody shows up <laughs> and they only they only initially blocked off seven sections in the lower on one side of the mm-hmm. lower arena at oh, Rupp Arena which it, when it's totally full and all the bleachers are rolled out on the bottom level it holds 20 21,000 so nobody expected that they had a giant black uh, curtain behind the stage where Pope was going to speak because that whole side was going to be empty they presumed and, you know, 30 minutes before the ceremony, as the place is filling, literally filling up, they drop the curtain and carry that off because, okay, there are going to be people behind them. And then, you know, 10 minutes before it's supposed to start, they say, well, we're going to be delayed because there's 5,000 more people outside trying to get in. And by the time he rolled in on a, on a tour bus uh, in a recreation of the 96 celebration and climbed off with that 96 championship trophy and the place it went nuts – the, it was full. They're, like the the bleachers were gone. They were rolled in on the lower level, so it reduced capacity. But I would guess pretty easily there were eighteen thousand people in there um, for a press conference, <laughs> and it, it and it and it really did turn into a pep rally. I mean, it like every every note that he hit that kind of struck a chord with Ken, Kentucky fans. It was about as loud as I've ever heard the place. Um, it was just a thunderous noise in there. And it, you could tell that there, there was, the fan base needed a reset and they were having sort of like a, a giant public therapy session after the last few years of frustration. And it's like, this is our guy. This is somebody who gets us. And, uh, and they were, they were partying like it was 1996. <laughs> Just needed uh, Tony Delk and the crew there to celebrate too. Well, hey, oh, they were I, there. Uh, as a guy, he was there. Yeah, uh, yeah. As a guy who's older than you, Kyle, I was a TV anchor uh, in Bowling Green and covered the '96 team, and they were just a fantastic team to cover. Oh my gosh, they were so good, um, uh, and got to know some of those guys a little bit. So uh, that '96 era is a heck of an era mm-hmm. to go back to. Listen, we know you're busy. Thank you for the time. People need to follow Kyle if you care about Kentucky basketball at all. He's your must follow at Kyle Tucker underscore ATH, or, of course, all of his writing on The Athletic. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, No problem. Have a good one. Yes, sir. One and only Kyle Tucker. Mm. Uh, Kentucky fans, what do you think now that you've heard that? 615-737-1045, that'll get you on the show. Also, if you're caught up in WNBA fever, if you're really caught up in it. Oh, fever. I see what you did. (laughs) You need to come back. If you really are into it, come on back. We got news for you. Man, maybe you've been feeling run down. You don't feel like yourself, right? You just can't seem to get going. I was feeling that way. So I called Edge Peptide, made an appointment right down the end of Cool Springs Boulevard. Easy to get there. Wanted to find out why am I tired all the time? Come home from work, lay on the couch, go to sleep. Any of y'all identify with that? Well, here's what they did. Take some uh, take some tests sit down with you, explain everything. They check your levels, your testosterone, vitamins, all that kind of stuff. 
Uh, and with me, they found a couple of things. And so uh, got a whole program worked out, got everything ordered. They want to make you feel better from the inside out, right? If you're a guy and you're trying to take care of everybody around you, uh, can't take care of everybody around you if you don't take care of yourself first. So right now they've even got a low pricing of 99 bucks a month for testosterone therapy, whether it's that or peptide therapy, whatever you need. They can discuss it all with you, but they can if you don't go see them. So edgepeptide.com, start there, then call. Make your appointment today, just like I did, 615-724-1878. Call Edge Peptide today. So many people trust Two Rivers Ford. Football players, working moms, business owners. Why? Because Two Rivers Ford has been doing business with integrity for decades. Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer.
Blaine and Mickey, appreciate all the shout-outs on the chat. A lot, a lot of people enjoying some Kentucky basketball talk, man. Uh, we were talking about the 96 team. I covered that team when I was working in TV in Kentucky and one of my other work lives. And and I remember there being a lot of NBA guy, guys on the team. Listen to this. If you're, Do you know the 96 Kentucky team, Bananas? No, no he, not off the top he, of my head, no. Yeah, he, I know it was well he before exist. he was born, but I thought maybe he was a historical guy or something. Okay. Tony Del Tony Del Tennessee, right? Antoine Walker, Walter McCarty, Derek Anderson, Ron Mercer, Mark Pope, Anthony Epps didn't play in the NBA, but was a fantastic player on that uh, team. Uh. Jeff Shepard, the dad of you know who, mm-hmm. Wayne oh, Turner, uh, Nazi Muhammad, nine NBA guys. Big, big right there. And Alan Edwards uh, was on that team who played for Kentucky. Cam Mills. There were some other guys as well whose names I remember being on the team and who played some more in subsequent seasons. Hmm. Nine guys. <laughs> Nine of those guys played in the NBA. And Epps was like tough point guard guy and didn't play in the NBA, but was such a huge part of that team. Yeah, they they, had- they, they was ridiculous how good they were. Yeah, I followed Kentucky a lot. They were thirty four and two. Because my high school teammate Sean Woods went there, and he gave me yep. ninety three, and so I continued to watch them, especially uh, during that time. And man, Kentucky was oof. They were powerful. They were man. Whew. They went undefeated in the SEC. They were, they were contending the national title every year. <laughs> they went. They went undefeated. Yeah, yes, they were thirty four and two. They, that just, was in the, the SEC. That was the start of the three year stretch. They went to the championship game three years in a row, right? Oh, that, that probably and was. And they, they remember because they because like... they didn't win it they didn't they didn't win it two times in a row, but they had the the game in between that they lost. They won it, I think, in ninety six and ninety eight, and lost it in ninety seven. Mm-hmm. I think you may be right. They were man, they were always in. I felt like it during that time. That was oof, man. Cease. Nine NBA players, legit NBA players. On a college basketball team. I hope it works out, though. Remember I said, uh, remember in the presser, you know, sometimes you you don't get the one you want, but, you know, as a coach, but then you may end up falling and may fall to your lap. You were forced to. That may happen. You just never know. It's going to be fun to watch. Then I was reading a lot up on him, you know, what he did at BYU Pope as a a coach. He uses analytics a lot. Mm. So that means they're going to be free willing, you know, open court, three-point shooting. Uh, chain, yeah, this one key thing uh, I, I took from, and I, all I kept thinking was like Barnes. And he says he uses analytics for defense. And he says that if you change your defense five times a game and catch them off guard, you'll get turnovers more often than not because it's unexpected, even though you, if you show on film that you're doing that. He said because in actuality, when the kids are out on the court, the players, they still have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And that, that benefited them and gave them extra, uh, you know, possessions. So I was like, oh, oh. And I don't know what he was changing the defenses up to, but he right. said that's why he does that. So at least he does a lot of different, you know, unconventional things in his eyes that work. So we're going to see a different, you know, type of Kentucky team stylistically, you know, on the court. It's, it's going to be interesting. See how it goes. And he's going to be able to bring in guys specifically to do what he wants to do because, as Kyle mm-hmm. Tucker told us, there's really hardly anybody left. Yeah, so, but did you see that Colin Chandler? Did you see him? That he just committed, decommitted from BYU? Went, oh, my. And then they showed him in a highlight versus Shepard when they were in high school. Oh. He ripped Shepard two times and went down and dunked. And this dude is like a point guard. This go I don't know. <laughs> man. Oh, no, man. He He – he looked real good. I'm like, if he gonna bring in guys like this, and then I think some big decommitted from BYU is coming. I think those only two. But one thing I can't say is Cal intentionally telling players to one by one commit to Arkansas like every other day. Just trickle it in. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the news cycle going. Is, is that, you know, is that what he's telling them to do? Uh, Trying to I'm, take the the cycle, you know, the news cycle, the news of every, you know, always something happened with Arkansas, right? Uh, nothing would surprise me. That, that, that's college basketball. <laughs> uh, speaking of basketball, WNBA draft last night. Caitlin Clark goes to Blaine's hometown team and a lot of Man, SEC man. representation and a lot of yeah. eyeballs on the WNBA draft. And the commission. I watched it all the way to the top 10 picks. See? And Blaine I stopped, watched. And I stopped. 
<laughs> WNBA hey. is looking to expand. They will consider Philly, Toronto, Portland, South Florida, and Nashville, Tennessee. What? Hey, it's the home of Pat Summit. People here love women's college basketball. Yeah, they do. That's a smart move by them, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, a city that's ever expanding, getting a new football stadium. The baseball world has been talking about moving here. It's constantly getting bigger. I mean, this would be a perfect city to to put a WNBA WNBA team, especially if you're That's looking insane. to grow. Especially if you're looking to grow the sport. And here's what they don't need: a stadium. Play. They don't need a stadium. You just play in Bridgestone. Yeah, you just fix up the locker room and you're ready to go. No stadium. Already got an arena here. Mm. You just rock and roll it, man. Think about baseball. They're trying to find a billionaire. To, <laughs> to build them a but they, they've been they've been searching for a while now. Five years. Steve Cavendish uh, wrote an article about it that you can find out there. Uh, WNBA. Hey, Nashville Arena. Just get with the Preds. Y'all work the schedule out. That's all it's going to take. Do, do the Preds have to give approval for that? I bet there has to be some chatting for sure. Yeah, I'm sure they would. I'm sure whatever team, like if they put a team here, whoever owns the team would have to pay for rights to the stadium, and they would pay the current owner of the stadium, which probably the Nashville Preds. I don't know. I guess we could look that up. Yeah. Reason why I bring that up because I, I remember there was a conflict, and the Predators said no. Forgot what who was trying to play there too Ooh. as well. I think that's what broke the deal. I think that's why Memphis decided to, you know, their the basketball team was like, well, they, we can't break into their contract. Ooh. And that's how Memphis got, you know, the NBA team. Well, we shall see. If not, get the old Nashville Municipal right down the street, mm. right around the corner. You could make it a palace for basketball. They'll be sharing that with the cats. <laughs> Is that where the cats are going to be? <laughs> there you go. Nashville just never stops growing. The cats didn't have to build a stadium either. All right, people want to talk wrong. about this. 615-737-1045. We'll take your calls. Uh, when we come back, we got Coach Mack coming up uh, to talk NFL draft and more. There's uh, Tennessee Vols TP news. Yeah, there's TP news for football and for basketball. We'll get to all that next. And Juan in Clarksville and you, if you want to join the discussion, 615-737-1045. Got to hand it to the NBA. They find ways to keep things spicy like this play-in tournament. And uh, this same NBA play-in tournament, you could bet, with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel. Look, it doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel, if you've already got an account. You're going to get bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on any Tuesday night matchup. NBA same-game parlays, perfect way to combine your bets for a chance to score a bigger payday. Man, give me the Red Hot Warriors. I think they're going to win uh, behind a big night by Steph Curry on the boards and with assists. But you can play tonight how you want to play it. Play this tournament the way you want to play it. Just head to FanDuel.com slash Mickey. Bet the NBA with a no sweat same game parlay. Again, FanDuel.com slash Mickey. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. You do have to be 21 or older. Present in Tennessee, first online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipts. See terms of sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem call the Tennessee Red Lining 1-800-889-9789.
It is 2 o'clock right on the dot. Good afternoon. I'm Joe Spinano from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. The spring transfer portal opened today, and Tennessee linebacker Elijah Herring is the first and so far the only vault to enter his name. The Riverdale product is heading into his junior season after leading Tennessee with 80 tackles last year. Tennessee basketball acquired hostage transfer Darlingstone Dubar, a 40% three-point shooter, from the last two seasons. Uh, the WNBA draft was last night, and WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert said that she was pretty confident that the league will expand to 16 teams by 2028, and the goal is to bring in a 14th team for 2026. Engelbert mentioned a couple cities such as Philadelphia, Toronto, Portland, Denver, as well as Nashville uh, as places that could be in, th- in discussions for an expansion franchise. Tonight, the NBA playoffs kick off with the play-in tournament. The Lakers and Pelicans get things started at 6.30 p.m. in the 7-8 game. With that winner headed to face the two-seed Nuggets, and the loser will head to face the winner of the 9-10 game, which is also tonight between the Warriors and the Kings. That game tips off at 9 p.m., and both games are on TNT. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you can visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Balls. This is 1045 the zone. Blaine and Mickey, 1045 Zone. Happy Tuesday. Uh, some good Kentucky basketball talk with Kyle Tucker of The Athletic in the first hour. If you missed it, remember, wherever you consume your favorite podcast, you can consume us. Rate, review, subscribe to the Blaine and Mickey podcast. Get the Zone app. Take it with you everywhere you go. Then you won't miss anything. WNBA has identified Nashville as a potential expansion city. Got the cats coming back, as Blaine pointed out. Hey, man, it's it's a wild time to be alive. Lonzo said, I'd rather see the cats than WNBA team. Cats football was awesome. Oh, says I used to go to those games, too. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think everybody did. Oh, man, it was awesome. Yeah, I did a coin toss a couple times. But they used to have these games you could do on the field. What was that I did? I can't remember. I was, oh, man, I was all entertained. I, I loved it. Especially it was indoors. No climate problem. Oh, no, it's fresh in there. Fast, uh, always at perfect quick. temperature. I was like, man, I don't know if I could actually. Man, they, those guys out there, that was a small field. Boy, being a defensive back was absolutely horrible. <laughs> and they would, like Todd Marinovich played in that league after he washed oh, out of the right. NFL. He played in Converse Chuck Taylors. Oh, he I played. They that. came here and played, and he wore red chucks. I'll never forget seeing him play in those. Really? Yes. Todd uh, Marinovich, for all those who was. Wasn't he a first-round pick? Oh, gosh, yes. Yes, by the Raiders. Raiders. Right? Yeah. Because he was from the West Coast. He, he was a kid who never had like a hamburger or a Coke. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was on a strict regimen. Yes, he was. <laughs> the strictest <laughs> of regiments. <laughs> and then he rebelled His against everything. Life. Yes. Yeah. And then when he got, like, let's say freedom, <laughs> when he lost his mind. And he did lose his mind. I mean, in a, in a good way, but just, you know, just for, for sports sake. Uh, Todd Marinovich. All right. Uh, Lots of great reaction to the Kyle Tucker interview, and he talked about the Mark Pope press conference that they basically set up for a press conference, and he said a lot of people were saying, why would you even do this at Rupp Arena? There's a press conference. Nobody's coming. So I said they opened, what do you say, seven sections. Hmm. And they said they opened doors, and people started showing up by the thousands. Like almost 20,000 people, I think he said, showed up, and he said eventually they had to open up every section and push a curtain up. And at one point, they had to tell Mark Pope, you can't talk yet. We're still letting a few hundred people in the building. It, that is insane. And you watched so They it, went from said. a roller coaster ride of highs and lows and losing Cal to we didn't want them to, oh, man, we get disappointed trying to get all the great coaches who are winning and then get to Pope and, oh, we don't want him, even though he's one of us. Yep. And then he shows up and gives his plan, and they are all in. That basically is exactly how when you read the message board, that right there, you go from, we don't want him. (laughs) We didn't want Cal. We don't want him. We're better than this. And then, oh, but we love you. Right. Right there. And you didn't, in the administration, got to give credit. 
They didn't let anything waver, and probably because they were backed in the corner, they had no choice. Mm-hmm. They they probably, the other options, they didn't want to go down, and this was the best choice. And sometimes, as I said before, sometimes it works out. Tennessee, y'all want to be laughing, but that's how y'all got Josh Heupel. Yeah. He wasn't number one. He might have been fifth on the list. Yeah, they had a lot of people turn yeah, down. Yeah, that's what job. I'm trying to say. He was a good yeah, voice down the And guess what? Day. He turned out pretty good, didn't he? I'm I'm nah, happy with it. Yeah, better yeah, yeah, better quit laughing. I saw all y'all laughing at the Mark Pope. Up higher. Yeah, better hold up. Pump on your brakes. <laughs> I know if you're driving that that EV, it it, on, it, it stops on a dime. Just pump it. <laughs> yeah, you better slow your road. Maybe you may not. With your boy, you may watch. Boy, they up He said their offense is like Golden State. Oh my. The biggest thing I took from that Kyle Tucker interview is him calling. Mark Pope, the anti-cow. Mm. And that that's really what's done Kentucky in, in the last several years is the fact that they have all these one-and-dones. And what is the one thing that Cal always says when, once they lose in March? Oh, oh we freshmen. Got these, yeah. They're, yeah. Like, freshmen. They're, fresh, they're the not freshmen, freshmen anymore. They're freshmen. You can't use that excuse every year, man. Come on, bro. What Mark Pope is probably going to do is he's going to do – he's going to bring in guys that are going to be there for three, four years and build an experienced roster – and they won't have that excuse anymore in March. It's, oh, our guys are too young. They don't know better. They haven't been here. Well, in Kentucky, with guys who have been in the program for three or four years, can't make that excuse anymore. Well, if you, I mean, yeah, yeah. But Tucker said that they were going to bring in a multitude of type of style players, whether their style, let alone if they were freshmen, TPers. Uh, three-year players. I mean, he he said we're gonna do get the best because we are Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So he he didn't pin, put himself in a corner. You know, he said, "Hey, we we're gonna take them all. If, if one and dunners, we're gonna take them. That's who we are. We are Kentucky. We can get any player." And so, with that being said, I I think man, that is a dangerous, dangerous school when you talk about their history. And if they do that, and and it's appealing, all it's gonna take is one year, and people see what that looks like. And they go, uh oh, I want to go back there. I want to go there. Yeah, you let's go to the phones. Juan in Clarksville wanted to weigh in on the Mark Pope experience. Juan, thanks for calling. 615-737-1045. Man, how you guys doing? Long time listener of the show, man. Thanks for calling. Uh, appreciate it, Juan. So, um, man, my thing is, I'm gonna be honest with you. You guys just touched on a lot of things right there. Uh when it comes to Mark Pope. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan. Mm-hmm. If, I, if, I, if I had to listen to the show today, I still wouldn't be sold on the Mark Pope, but you guys reaching out to Kyle up there that covers them, y'all told me to say, well, dang, you know, we we got what we got. It may not have been the first choice, but mm-hmm. we got what we got. And now, now we're headed into somebody that you can, I ain't going to say trust, but you know you can build on and go forward, moving forward with the mm-hmm. Kentucky brand in the Yeah. Well, the, thank, you thank you for the call, Juan. I mean, the brand in basketball is as big a basketball brand as you can have. Oof. And Mark Pope is part of that. He hung a banner in the rafters there with eight other eight other NBA, NBA players on the 96 team with the denim uniforms. So he is part of that. Now, as you've pointed out, Tennessee fans really happy with Heupel. He was way down the list. Mm-hmm. They called dudes, and eventually he called his old friend, yeah. From back at UCF. Mm-hmm. Come on over. And I remember people being very wary mm-hmm. about that. Bananas. What were your thoughts? I really didn't know anything about him R- at that, all. That's basically saying enough. You and your buddies, though. Because you thought Tennessee was better, and if you hadn't heard of him, then he's not good enough. I, I, I Yeah, I really didn't know anything mm-hmm. about him. And so I I probably critiqued the hire. Um, that's but, a probably. nice way to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but Revisionist you know what? history. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Hmm. It, I probably, it worked out. You will not admit that I, you did not want you to. You and the crew at the Cracker Barrel eviscerated this was, hire. So I was at UT. I was at UT at the time. Uh, so, and I actually remember his his uh, his intro press conference. I was sitting in my college radio station uh, for my shift, and I had it up on my laptop, and I was watching it. I did actually really like what I heard from him. Um, I was weary about the recruiting because uh, that was kind of his big. Thing is, oh, he he's not going to be able to recruit right. in the SEC. Yeah. He's not going to be recruited at Tennessee, and so right now he's proven me a little bit wrong. Um, he still has some work to do uh, to get up there. I think they've had like top twelve classes so far, some something like that. So, 
But yeah, I was uh, I was definitely weary of it when it first hired in. So yeah, Kentucky fans, just see see how it works out. The right. thing is, not saying it's going to work out, but uh, sure. it, it may. You just never know. That's all I'm trying to say. And you could have hired exactly who everybody wanted, yeah. and maybe that didn't work yeah. out. Right. I don't even remember who like fans wanted before Josh Hy- like during that coaching search. I don't remember like the fan consensus of oh we want this guy groomers. Oh yeah, oh, those are always. Associated. Remember he bought some land. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They they just knew they had Gruden. <laughs> oh, his wife went to UD. He was a what, graduate assistant there. That's when they met. She was a cheerleader. We all remember the groomers. Everything that went to that. Yeah, I was like, eh, I don't, I don't know about that one. But I, I was cool with the hypo. I was. Our thing about hypo was, look, man. Who knows if they'll be any good? They got. All these problems. They're going to look good on offense. They'll score a bunch of points, and that'll be points. exciting. What if, the worst uh, thing is going to happen. It looks good, and fans going to show up just to see it. What if they won half their games and scored a bunch of points? And he was a little better than that. Nah. They scored a bunch of points. I mean. Then once he got the right quarterback, Hooker, then the offense just took off. Boy. Ooh. They even tried to not have Hooker be the guy. Yeah. It, Josh Heupel's first. Instinct was his guy in Joe Milton. It was like when what Butch tried to redshirt Dobbs because he didn't practice. He didn't practice. And I want to say, Butch, please. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to go back to the Butch Jones days. Butch Jones. <laughs> hey man, I was like, what is what is going on, man? This dude's a gamer. I don't care what he doing in practice, man. Every time he get in the game, this dude is he's a problem. He can run and he's, he's a consistent throw in the air. But guess what? The more and more he plays, that'll change. It got better. Butch Jones didn't want Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Oh, and T. I, Higgins. Both guys wanted to come to Tennessee, and Butch Jones didn't want them. I wish they'd want to go to Jonesboro because that's where Butch is now, in my hometown. Speaking of, speaking of that, yeah, that's they lost a player. Man. The good players, who plays, you started 10, 11 games, didn't they? Oh, no, Through the transfer injuries. portal is like they buy Frost in the, like, those Marvel oh, movies. It's opened up in Mr. Jonesboro. Mr. Harry, what's going on? Yeah, that. Oh, you're talking about UT. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. With a lot, Jones well, Burrell's transfer with portal. With Elijah I think he start, So I told Mickey this uh, when he asked me about it before the show. Is he asked me how I felt, and I said, well, it kind of sucks because he was going to be more of a depth guy, especially with Keenan Peely coming back and Arian Foster, who's the freshman last year who got hurt. And that's really why he started so many games is because right. of injuries. Uh-huh. And it sucks when you lose a depth piece that has that starting experience. But you, now you just got to hope that the, the guys in front of him who are better are going to be able to stay healthy and play the full season. No, the guy. That's ahead of him. What do you mean, these guys? Well, these Keenan guys. Peely and Arian Foster, I would assume, are the, the they, They're the, the starters. Two. They don't play the same position. They're both uh, inside linebackers. No, the, two guys start, right? Two guys start. Who are the two starters? Peely. Pe- Peely, and I would assume it's going to be Carter because he was in the rotation to start right. last year as a freshman, but then he got injured and got pushed out. Well, here's an old adage. That most coaches go by. If the young guy comes in based off of injury and he does close to a 24, five-year-old, by the way, Peely, then he actually, I didn't believe this until they said this, he is actually better. Mm -hmm. Because his upside is better than Peely. Peely's already peaked. Mm -hmm. So they let a local guy leave for a guy that hadn't even played here one year because he was injured, and he is already older and, and is <laughs> twenty four years old. So I, I, that one there was a, that one there was a little baffling. I'm, I'm gonna just say that even if the guys are not better than him, you usually go with the younger player. Yeah, if you're even, the old guys the guy leaving. Leaving. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. See, so you can learn from this and see that's that was that was man that was. Wow, he they must have thought he didn't play well at all. I, I thought Harry, he, he showed a lot of upside. He, I thought he, he got better every led, game. Led he led the them in tackles. tackles. Yeah, How did he do against Alabama? Oh, oh, don't get me going. So to me, that was the wrong move. You supported the guy who was going to be a one-year player here instead of the guy who's a four-year guy and is local. Got to pay attention. Home. That that one that that smell test here doesn't sound right. 
And the Peely, when he played, it wasn't like, oh, man, he is, oh, my God, this is the next Brad Erlacher. <laughs> uh, I didn't feel that. I felt like he was a good player. Uh, coach Mack was a great coach, and he coached a lot of good players. And the Titans are trying to find some great players in the draft. And why don't we just combine all that and talk to Coach Mack about it next? We will do that on Blaine and Mickey. Allergy season is upon us, and pollen is in the air. But fear not. Cool Ray has your back. And our $49 tune-up will have your HVAC system running smoothly, keeping allergens at bay. Plus, enjoy 10% off indoor air quality products for an extra boost. So are you ready to say goodbye to your old HVAC system? Well, with Cool Ray, it's out with the old and in with the new. And we'll even give you a thousand dollars for your old system when you upgrade with us. That's right. We'll pay you to breathe easier. And with Tennessee's unpredictable weather, it's crucial to be prepared. That's where our whole home generators come in. With fifteen hundred dollars off, you can keep your home powered up, rain or shine. So don't let Mother Nature catch you off guard. Let Kure be a beacon of reliability. So Tennessee, are you ready to embrace spring with confidence? So give Cool Ray a call today and let us make a season a breeze. We're your partner in comfort no matter the season. Here's to spring filled with sunshine, smiles, and stress-free living. Cool Ray, keeping Tennessee cool, plumbing right, and lights bright. Visit CoolRay.com to take control of your home's comfort. That's CoolRay.com. All right, I'll told you guys this before, and I'll tell you again. Best summer of my life, family lived at the lake. It's a long story, but for one summer of my life, we lived at the lake. I loved it. Maybe you've been dreaming about lake living for yourself. Well, here's your chance. Limited number of lake lots being released to the public, and it is coming up soon, Saturday, April 20th. Resort-style lake living. This is the good stuff, the best of the best. Walking trails and shoreline and clubhouse and waterfront concerts and pickleballs and pools and on-site coffee shops. So it's sure it's the lake, which is the best. But it's also all the modern stuff that you've been dreaming of, too. And it's all just 20 minutes from Knoxville. And they got financing available. And you could just be chilling at the Waterfront Restaurant right now, listening to us on the Zone app if you wanted to. So why not call and secure yourself a private appointment? Times are limited. Celebrate the late life. Make all those fantastic memories. Limited property release coming up Saturday, April 20th. Go right now, lakelivingtn.com, or call, get one of those appointments, go see it for yourself, 865-408-9992. Memories start here.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 Zone, second hour of the Tuesday show. Of course, that only means one thing, the arrival of Coach Mack, brought to you by the good folks at Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer. I bet at Two Rivers Ford right now, Coach, they're working on their draft boards just like you are. It's, hey, man, it's nine days away, Coach. It's almost here. Mm. It is It is right here, and you're right. Uh, you know, the South's most trusted Ford dealer, they've probably got everything handled. So, uh <laughs> You're absolutely right. They're getting prepared. They're prepared for people to come and get a great experience buying a Ford, too. I promise you that. 100%. Um, where are teams right now in this process? I mean, just with evaluation or stacking boards, what are teams doing right now nine days out? Well, I'll tell you, you know, from my experience, you know, which is about 30-plus years of it doing this, uh, and of course they've got a new staff. So they had other things that, you know, they were trying to do. First of all is, you know, is put together those, those uh, positional tapes. That, that's very, very important uh, because, you know, they're brand new getting together. But in the last week, you know, they started their draft meetings uh, with everybody in there positionally uh, with all the scouts and everybody in, in the room. They started that last Monday and, and we're doing that uh, around, you know, being able to start early with their phase one of the off season. But what you're doing is now you've got your board, you start, they've just got their board stacked and they probably, you know, will probably wind that up uh, this weekend. And then, then the next week they'll probably start uh, what we used to do. We'd have, we'd have a few uh, uh, last minute checks. And as far as uh, you get upgrades on, on what the, the physicals were, what everybody's, you know, how, if, if there was anything that had come up, you know, with the last visits that you'd had, anything like that, you'd clean up. Then you'd start doing some of your mock drafts, trying to, to look at teams that are drafting around you, either ahead of you or behind you, see what their draft needs are, and then start working the phones and seeing, you know, what you can glean from anybody that's not going to lie to you, mm. you know, kind of about what's, about what's you know, could be happening around you. But, uh, you know, they're closing in on it, but you can always tweak your board. You're not going to make any major moves unless – something comes up, you know, that is, is a little bit untoward, just like what happened with, you know, with, with sweat, you know, you know, right, right before the draft. So there's always things like that that come up, but uh, in, in the most part, your draft board is, is getting to a point of completion and, and, you know, by Wednesday of next week, it'll, they'll probably be ready to say, okay, this is it. Now let's, uh, let's get ready to go for when it starts. Coach Matt getting us going, getting ready for the draft to start here on Blaine and Mickey. Uh, Coach, well, you talk about uh, always, uh, you know, your experience in the league naturally, but how much do you look at mock drafts, Mickey's favorite source of information every week? In for entertainment perception? purposes. For, for entertainment, of course. Uh, you know, did you guys even glance at them or, you know, just laugh at it or did you take into account and, and, and you know, just what were thoughts of coaches and scouts of mock drafts? Didn't look at it a bit. Mm. You know, didn't look at it at all because nobody's going to tell the people that are putting these. Now, some some of these people that are putting these out are better connected than others. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But some of them are just blind guesses, and some of them, some of them that are not as connected as others, are taking a cue from the ones that are that are you know right. more right. consistent and more connected, and so they're copying their thing. You know, so to put any credence into any of it, none of it. Mm. Well, you know, it's funny because you talked about how. You guys are, you know, at this time are kind of organizing the board to its final finality, I guess. But, man, just being a natural human being, is there some part of that when you're doing it that you start second-guessing yourself? Because that's kind of what I was thinking if I was in a room and then all of a sudden I'm right back where I started. Like, I've moved all these pieces. Then all of a sudden what I thought in the beginning months ago is kind of where I'm at today. Yeah, and that and that that's that's a natural progression. You're 100 percent right. I mean, the ifs and buts were candy and nuts part of it <laughs> come into it, and you you know you start to you start to to oversimplify it, uh -huh. and then you start to overanalyze it. But then you finally you know that that's what all of these meetings are for when you get back together. Let's go. Okay, guys, look, let's go back to you know the fundamental foundation. There's a reason that that the majority thought this. There's a reason, you know, that mm -hmm. they thought this. There's a reason you thought this before the combine showed up. There's a reason you thought this before the senior bowl showed up. What is what has made you change your mind drastically on this? If those things are starting to align up, that absolutely is. I mean, that absolutely does. 
that's why, you know, you don't get anything firmly set. You just kind of let it have the natural progression of it. But what you're saying, that absolutely comes into it. Mm. We're on with Coach Mack giving us the, the Mack attack. And I guess, Coach, I want to talk about one offensive lineman. You may have mentioned him before, but started doing a little research on him, and that was an offensive tackle from uh, Arizona, Jordan Morgan. Yeah. Where do you slot him uh, in, as far as round or rounds? Uh, and uh, is he left, right, or is he versatile? Somewhere in the second to the third round, uh, you know, he, and, and, uh, you know, six five three eleven. You know, I like him. He ran a five oh five forty. I mean, he's a guy that can move. Uh, he had a decent senior bowl. He's got you know ten and seven eighths hands, uh, thirty two and seven eighths arms, which aren't extremely long. But uh, you know, he's got an eighty one inch eighty one inch wing. Uh, he's a three year starter mm. there. He's a three year starter there. The thing that that uh, when you just look at his numbers. Just you know, take the film out of it. I mean, you know, he he did 27 on the bench, which means he's got some strength, you know, upper body right now. I thought he had pretty decent feet. You know, he's coming. He's, he was coming off last year an ACL that he had in 2022. He has played nothing but left tackle there at, Air, at Arizona. Uh, and again, he was part of that group that you know had a big big year last year uh, and started every game with Arizona last year. When he got down to the Senior Bowl, they they you know they he he did some offensive tackle. Some people, you know, think some offensive line coaches, they had him work at guard a little bit. I think he's a very, very versatile guy. He weighs 311 right now. I think he could probably get a little bit bigger with that frame. He already shows that he's got some upper body strength. So, you know, when I, when I put him up vertically on the draft board, had him somewhere because this is a pretty rich position group, this offensive tackle group, somewhere, you know, depending on what your team needs in the second or clearly at the top of the third round. Mm. Coach, you always hear uh, offensive line coaches talk about, you know, strength, and you just went through bench press. But they also talk about leg strength, and then they also talk about hand strength. Is there anything that they could add to the combine to help you see if they have hand strength when you're an offensive lineman and where you can kind of gauge how strong they are with their legs? Because ultimately, your legs are the strength of your entire body, in multi, you know, I mean, with guys in the trenches. So how do you view and look at all of that? Well, you know, the, the, that's, that's, what the, that's what the jumps are for, to see what mm -hmm. kind of explosion you have lower body and also they do it they do a drill of the offensive lineman if mm -hmm. you ever sit in that you know in the stadium to watch them do mm -hmm. the the various things around the things that go on on the floor they have one you know lower body flexibility oh that they that, that they do oh, yeah, whether, that. You know, yeah 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 and whether they can bend <laughs> you know with feet straight out you know arms straight out without teetering yeah. and then then how flexible they are uh -huh. you know because you need lower body yeah. flex when you get into the National Football League, that's the one thing that separates offensive linemen a lot is how flexible they are in their lower body because let's just be honest, they're going to have to go against some pretty flexible dudes that are playing mm -hmm. in front of them that are coming at them mm -hmm. you know, pretty quick. And so the, the more flexible you are, the more you can stay balanced in your stance throughout the whole thing from the initial punch to then being able to kick slide or do whatever you have to do rather than if your lower body flexibility – isn't as good, then you have to start leaning and reaching. And when you have to start doing that, then you put yourself at a disadvantage. Mm, great points there. We're on with Coach Mack giving us some Mack attack. One more player, and, you know, we were talking yeah. about the, the receiver at Washington, but I was looking at the other receiver. I know the other one, Mickey's guy, uh, you know, it's going to go tie. But where do you think this kid's going to go? The Pope kid at Washington as well who plays wide receiver. He stood out a little bit too. I really like the kid. I, 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 really, I really like him a lot. I mean, I really do, because you know, first of all, he's a he's a Texas kid. He's from East Texas. He's from Lufkin, Texas, which oh. is you know down down in East Texas. He was originally at Texas Tech, all right. So he was he was originally at Texas Tech. Then he transferred, you know, to Washington. He's six oh one three, two hundred three pounds. Ran a four five two forty, which is you know which is which is fine. Got got uh, good sized hands. Has got a reach. But what what you look at him? I mean, his production this year: sixty nine catches. You know for 1,159 yards, playing on the other side of a doomsday, who is mm -hmm. very legit as a first-round player. Nine touchdowns, didn't have many drops. This guy, as I said, has got, pretty, got good hand size, really, really good hands, 37-and-a-half vertical and a 10-9 broad. So you know he's got some explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and to me, he was a three. He was a, he was a transfer. He was a starter there. 
He played both outside. When you watch the tape, he played. Mm-hmm. He's number two. If you ever want to watch, mm-hmm. if people want to watch tape on him, he played outside and in the slot. He's a good athlete. His route refinement at the top of the route, if you want to get technical, could probably use a little bit of work. But he's a very, very physical player. This guy's a tough dude. He's a tough, tough player. And uh, and and to me, he and he will come into a league, get some coaching, improve his route, his route stem improvement. I really like this player. I mean, I I, I like him a lot. Mm, what rounds are you projecting? Second or third. Second or third round. There you have it. Coach Mack giving us the Mack attack. Coach, we know that uh, you coach linebackers and you coach some of the very best ones who ever played in your Chicago Bears days. And also here in Tennessee, you had, uh, you had Bully and you had some great players. Let me ask you about a couple of inside linebacker type guys. Sure. And if we can, let's start with the dude who played high school ball right down the road, Junior Colson at Ravenwood. Well, I like, really like Junior Colson. Very solid. Very, very solid player. Now, it, it plays it in an extremely smart game. He's got, a, he's got a physical game to him. In this in this draft, he and Edgerton Cooper are one two two one. However, you know whatever type of defense you're running, to me there won't be an inside backer taken in the first round in this draft. But uh, I really, I really, really, you know, like this player. I really like him because he's he's smart. He looks like he gets it every now and then. Uh, he just like any uh, young behind the ball backer, especially in this day and age that's coming into the professional game, you gotta, he's got to learn how to use his hands better with extension, with shock and shed, rather than trying to shoulder and run through people. But I like this player, and to me, he will, he will come off early in the second round to somebody. What about uh, Jeremiah Trotter of Clemson? Trotter, Trotter looks like somebody uh, playing linebacker that you would think just that has kind of been coached his whole life by his dad, who is a tremendous linebacker in this league. You know, for for, sure. for a lot of years, Eagles. and, and yeah. he, he he he's nuanced. He understands it. He's not a real twitchy athlete, but he's a very he's a very physical athlete, and he's also cerebral behind the ball. And when I watch linebackers, I try to see how good they are with their eyes. You know, if they if they've got uh, you know frantic eyes, if they're looking all around, or you know before the snap, if they're pretty concentrated in on what they're looking at, how good they read that center ball triangle, and how well they can get ahead of blocks. Uh, I like I like him probably somewhere around bottom of second, third round maybe, depending on where linebackers go in this draft because it's not a real it's not a real deep group. I think the run will start on these linebackers once they start to go, but uh, he's going to make somebody a, a decent draft pick. All right, trying to just cover all areas of the draft. So these are some earlier guys. There's a later round guy that's interesting to me is Nathaniel Watson of Mississippi State. Uh, mm-hmm. He would be a later round guy, I would imagine. Not sure where. I'd be curious to get mm-hmm. your thoughts on him and even his possible draft mm-hmm. position. Team captain, led the SEC in tackles. Mm-hmm. Man, oh, yeah. that was forty five, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, he bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, and this guy, this guy's the thing that you said about him right there is very, very, it's very cognizant that sticks out on film. He's very, he's an instinctive football mm-hmm. player. Plus, plus his engine runs really hot. Mm-hmm. His engine runs really hot all the time. But as you say, I think this is a middle of the rounds guy. Uh, and, and depending on this, this so much, this draft so much depends on early runs, position wise, and it also depends really once you get into that into that third round and then and later into the third day, positional needs for teams. That's that's going to be huge for a guy like this. Talking to Coach Mack, getting it all broken down with the Mack attack here on Blade and Mickey. Well, Coach, I was watching uh, Penn State, and I, I didn't even realize they had another really good player. Oh, yeah. What, I don't know how to pronounce this, but his last name is Isaac. Adisa. Adisa. Yeah. Adisa. yeah, yeah, the defensive yeah, Adisa, end, Adisa, man. Adisa, Adisa, Adisa Isaac on the other side of Chop What's Robinson, that? and you're right. I mean, this guy, now, I, I like him. He's a second- or third-round guy, too. 6043, 247. Uh, his numbers four seven four forty had about a thirty four. He's got thirty four inch arms, a wing. But this guy is a two year starter. When you watch the tape, uh, he plays. He plays in the two and a three point stance. Mm-hmm. Very very productive. I mean, he had thirty seven tackles this year, sixteen tackles for loss. So you're always around the ball. Seven and a half sacks on the other side of Chop Robinson. Uh, uh, he's he got he's got he's got a two hand swipe move. He's got a one hand swipe move. Uh, his bulk on the edge at 247, he can probably get a little bit stronger and bulk up a little bit. Sometimes you can see the bigger offensive tackles because he's he's 247. 
Uh, you know, sometimes they can engulf him, but I like his pass rush moves. He has got solid, solid traits to to develop. The thing that sticks out on tape that you put in a plus column or with him, excellent backside chase. He's close to the ball. He tackles well in space. Uh, this is an eventual starter in my mind in the league. Mm, there you have it. Well, one more. Since we were talking about UK earlier today, how about Andrew yeah. Phillips? Uh, I've watched him throughout his career. Kind of like him. I'm just interested to see what you thought about him, and especially on the speed element. But uh, what are your no, thoughts that, on uh, you're right, Blaine. I mean, Andrew Phillips, the cornerback, is you know five ten six, one ninety, which is a nice, a mm-hmm. nice size cornerback. Four four eight in the forty, seventy mm-hmm. five uh, inch wing. So he's got he's got he's got some reach on him. Uh, the thing that I like about him, for first of all, let's start with the raw numbers on testing: forty-two inch vertical jump Ooh. and an eleven-three broad jump. Ah. Okay. Now you talk about lower body explosion. He's a physical press. He, he's played from press before. He's he's played also on that that side shuffle that you see a lot of corners mm-hmm. do in, in in you know in the collegiate game where they turn and they look inside. Yeah, the but he's done that. But and the other thing is, this guy is is a really pretty dominant participant on special teams. He's got special teams experience. He played outside and he played in the nickel at Kentucky. Uh, the thing that he had, he doesn't have, he doesn't have ball production as far as interceptions. In fact, zero picks, but his production at the, at the point, as far as being able to be there and close is really good. He's a two year starter. Uh, I, I like, I like, I like the fact that, that what he does, he's a, he's got a physical demeanor to him. He's got a quick transition. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was doing him, I put an asterisk and just went football player. Yeah. So if, like you're, if you're trying to draft a football player, this guy's one of them. Ooh, that's probably why I like him so much, as well as the one Mickey asked about the linebacker. See ball, get ball. He, he's that guy. So, uh, yeah, those are two guys I I, I really like there, uh, Coach uh, Coach Mack, giving us the Mack attack. Anymore? Coach, uh, we're running out of time already, man. It just flew by, but uh, we got one more time to talk before the draft next week, so I'm sure we'll have plenty more guys to discuss with you. And then, uh, gosh, then the week after that, we'll be talking about actual draft picks. Can't wait. Guys, you guys always p- uh, pick up the right guys. You're looking at the right guys, I promise <laughs> you. And, you know, it, 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 let's just say this. Everybody gets concentrated on – you talk about mock drafts, you know, and everybody gets concentrated on the first round – the the belly of the draft is is where you build your team. Mm-hmm. So uh, you guys are looking at the right dudes. Man, Coach Ooh. Mack is always the right dude. Thank you, Coach. You dad. See dude. you guys. Coach is that dude. He is the man in black. Yeah. All right, we come back uh, a little more Vols transfer portal news, basketball news that bananas is over the moon about. Over the moon about it. And Larissa is on hold and wants to talk some hoops. We'll do that as well. Coming up next on Blaine and Mickey, powered as you know it is by All Four Seasons Garage Doors. Mm. The NBA play-in tournament, whew, right here, man, gives teams a chance to keep on playing their way into the postseason. And it only seems right now that new customers on FanDuel can play their way into 150 bucks. You just place any $5 bet, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets that's win or lose to use during these NBA playoffs. Whew, man, there's a lot to get through. I, I love how LeBron is playing right now. I love a big opening game for him. I uh, love a double-double for Embiid because, let's be honest, he's a walking double-double. And I think a short stay is coming up for the Bulls. That's what I'm seeing. But what are you seeing? Just go to FanDuel.com slash Mickey, and you can get started. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash Mickey. FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA. You'd have to be 21 or older. Present Tennessee, minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets. It expires seven days after receipt. Max refund is five bucks unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee red line at 1-800-889-9789.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Let's take Larissa's call, then we'll tell you about this new Tennessee basketball edition. Larissa, what's going on? Thank you for your patience. Oh, you're welcome. Hi, guys. Long Hello. time to talk to you. We've been missing and... you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I know>. Whatever. <laughs> no, you're, you're a great you caller. Mean? You should call yeah. more often. What you are you talking distance. about? <laughs> well, I will tell you, I do uh, travel a lot, but I listen to you guys all the time. And uh, great, great shows, of course, great station. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I wanted to just touch on is sports and music bring people together. And this station represents that in, on so many levels very eloquently. Mm. And I have kind of want to touch a little bit on a caller that uh, called on Buck Rising's show in regards to the WNBA. Mm. I mean, Nashville is a great sports city. Mm -hmm. Again, sports and music bring people together. Sure. This, you know, this town does that, absolutely. Yeah. Blaine and Mickey. And, Mickey show represents all of that. That's right. We got a pro sports and a tried to be pro music. So we're, <laughs> no, you were. We stop that. Come on, man. <laughs> we're trying to give you both angles here. Well, I, you guys are serving. You guys are definitely serving. And, you know, just Major League Baseball, it, uh, there's so much stuff that's going on within the sports world, period. I mean, it's percolating. It's exciting. You know, if it's the draft mm. that's coming up, if, if it's, I'm not an alum for Tennessee, but I support them because I live in Tennessee. Sure. I mean, just so much stuff is happening. So, you know, when anyone that actually calls and it's like, you know, I don't like the WNBA or I wouldn't support them, well, then don't go to the game. Mm -hmm. You have an option. Go eat some ice cream. Go do. Go eat a donut. <laughs> go do ah, somewhere else. Bring that heat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm knowing that ice cream with the heat. <laughs> I'm on the front you know, row. <laughs> Exactly. Well, maybe we make it a professional pickleball around here. Who knows? Yeah. But the bottom line is I just wanted to reach out and say love the show. Love you guys. And, Mickey, you still have not done that, I, I think, months ago. It was cold, and I was. We were, you guys had, like, a little segment in regards to uh, a theme song. I mean, you guys are rocking it with Rick James and then some. Okay. But I was like, why don't you, like, Write something. You oh, got it? yeah, with your creative entrepreneurial self. I got. A, I've been more entrepreneurial <laughs> lately. I've been full of it, so yeah, I'll have to see what I can. The do. little one keeping him busy, though, man. Yeah, a lot of a lot of little people baseball, Larissa, and big my my daughter playing gigs. Maybe I need to get her to write a theme. It'd probably be better than I could. Oh, play. Ooh, that would be up and then you pop her up. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you may have a Grammy on your hands. You never know. Oh, hey, she's going to be, she's going to make it in ways that I never did, which is, couldn't make me happy. That's because of your experience. Yes. <laughs> I'll share how not to make it in the years 1996 uh, to 98. Larissa, thank you for checking hey. in. Bye, guys. Yeah. Have a great one. Yeah. Yes, yes ma'am. I love hearing from Larissa. She's I so know. positive. Mm -hmm. I love it. She's got to keep calling. Maybe she's the one who called Darlin Stone Dubard. You know about him? Mm -mm -mm. One of the greatest names I've ever heard yeah. for a basketball player. He is your newest Tennessee Vol. Six foot eight, two hundred eleven okay. pound dude transfer from the TP. It opened up, and he came where, out. Where, of where did he go? Hofstra and oh, Iowa State. The guy that, oh, the guy that so, was on from Hofstra. So okay. he, on Hofstra, he's listed as a guard. In his recruiting profile, he was listed as a small forward. Yeah, a six foot eight. So he's big. Like for people who've met me, think my size. Yeah, <laughs> me and, and he can Darwin shoot, Stone. And he <laughs> And he shoots forty percent from three. People who have yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I, I saw the stats all on that. Uh, we, when they brought him in on a visit, so yep. yeah, yeah. So he's going to be hopefully their next connect. Hopefully, okay. But I'll tell you because you always say okay, Hofstra, twenty four and eight versus Duke, twenty three and five versus St. John. So he had big games against the big guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, basketball is a little different animal than uh, you know football. Uh, you, you know, you the best player on your smaller team, whether it's Hofstra or Belmont, you're going to be good against everybody, just like the kid from Belmont is visiting North Carolina after he left UT. That dude's visiting everywhere. Yeah, see, so basketball is not to equate the same. If you can score and put the ball in the basket, you always can score and put the ball in the basket as long as you got the height, you know, <laughs> and the athleticism. So uh, just a matter how quickly you adapt to the guys you're going against. But, uh, yeah, that's a big, you know, big hit, man. And I, I trust – just what I saw from Dalton Connect, I trust Rick Barnes to be able to, not saying that this guy is going to be the next Dalton Connect, I see right, right, of the year yeah, like that, but I trust him to be able to put these guys who 
had success at a smaller school to put them in a position to succeed at Tennessee, especially if, on the offensive end if they can score. Connect just can't spoil you guys, though, because he was a consensus first team All-American. All-American. Yeah. That they got the SEC Player of the Year. SEC Player of the Year. And he won the Julius Irving Award, so now you can hang his jersey up even because he won a national award. I mean, DK from Northern Colorado via junior college. Well, that's one for the ages, that dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you're not you're not going to hit on that every every time. But if you can get even just like... Yeah, 15 points a game yeah. is fine. Oh, gosh, if he scored 15 a game. They got five more scholarships, Blaine. Five yeah. more. Oh, they, they, they could they, sign you and Bananas and me. Ron Slay could go back and play again. Uh, you know, when you say the word, do we trust Coach Barnes? I mean, that's a given in my opinion. Uh, this is what he does for a living. The The thing is, you're going to get the players. It's a matter how quickly when you're a five-player guy that you come together and play as a unit. That's the hardest part. Mm-hmm. And that's the coaches have nothing to do with that. It's up to the actual players. Uh, so uh, they can push for that. But, yeah, it's, it's Coach Barnes. He's a Hall of Fame coach. Tennessee's a great brand. They're going to get the players. That That's not even a question. It's about how quickly can they come and then win, and then can they duplicate and get further than they did this this up you know this past season. I just want to put them on the all-name team because Darling Stone Dubar is just a phenomenal name. He's going to be there, uh, and we'll be there tomorrow. But right now we won't be here because we got to go, and it's time for 3HL. But in the meantime. In between time. Peace.